Jim Cunningham from WQED 89.3 interviewed Barbara Jones, the chief curator of the Westmoreland Museum, where they are hosting the 103rd Associated Artist of Pittsburgh annual exhibition. Well, let's start right here. Um, one of, I think, the non-traditional approaches is um, April Frigis, and I hope I'm pronouncing her last name correctly, is she, she prints um, a photogram, and she does it um, typically with uh, a photograph, typical photographic process where she has a photograph, um, a light-sensitive paper, uh, photographic paper, and she exposes it to light. And she creates all of these abstract shapes by things that she either cuts out in different um, black, white, and gray, and she lays them down, and at different exposures, it creates these abstract patterns on the photograph and this is generally a flat you know two-dimensional piece and for every show she brings it in flat hangs it so it hangs out all its wrinkles and then she comes in and sculpts it herself and pins it up so every time she, she does this she can do this many times with the same photograph she forms it differently so it becomes a unique um, sort of installation piece, site specific, every time she does it. And then she'll hang it out again, and you'll start to see some of that almost um, pentimenti that is the residue of where she folded it the time before. So you'll get cracks and crevices and creases and things, which is really fascinating. So I think taking a traditional medium and really pushing it into, you know, from traditionally two dimensional photograph to a three dimensional. This piece by Seth um, Clark. It, he's a fairly recent graduate from Carnegie Mellon. He presented it um, digitally, and when I saw it, I thought it was a construction of, um, you know, broken pieces of wood and parts of, um, you know, um, they almost look like window pieces and everything, and I really thought it was a three-dimensional construction, and when he brought it in to deliver it, I found out it's a 2D painting. It's actually a diptych. So that's a fa sort of fascinating. It still has the dimensional quality. Um, it looks like it's somebody balled up, you know, all these houses, um, potentially, and, you know, that had been um, destroyed, and made them into this this um, you know shape and that's what it looks like to me pieces and parts of, of slivers of wood and um, debris and I think it's just it's sort of a really wonderful um, uh, sort of contrast between what you see and what you you know the realism of it that that it is two-dimensional when it appears three yeah, I wonder if he was looking at the aftermath of the Johnstown flood. You know, well, it, it looks almost like that. looks like that. It really does. The, you know, where you see all of that debris and everything, how it, it all forms together to create a ball. And so with that in mind, I picked um, this piece, which is a sculpture called Kebabs by um, Yusef Isham. Oh, sorry, Isham Yusef. Sorry, <laughs> backward there. But um, these are pieces of wood that are, have been skewered as in a kebab. And the, it is, you know, it's two um, sculptures. They sit on a pedestal, and they're, they're all used pieces of wood. Some of them look like maybe they've even been burned, and, um, you know, they're, they're, some of them look a, a, even a little petrified. But they're, it's all used wood, and, and he's basically skewered them and called them kebabs. So it's kind of a playful you know, um, take on what you would see in the natural world. And so comparing those two pieces, um, where one I thought was three-dimensional, this one is truly three-dimensional. And then there's um, the paintings that were actually um, there for me to see. And this is a, a large uh, diptych also, two panels by uh, Scott Hunter. And I just really think that the way that he applies paint, it's very colorful. There's lots of pinks and um, chartreuse and blues and um, greens and all of these really great um, sort of joyful colors. I, I got that from the painting that I saw in this, in this show. And I was really pleased to see that there's a very strong um, uh, sort of painterly technique, and it's very abstract, non-objective, but you get a um, reaction from looking at it, just your reaction to the colors, you know, it, they sort of speak to you, and it's a, it's a really wonderful piece. Would work in a living room with the right colors. It would, and then <laughs> it's next to a photograph by Christopher Ruane, which, you know, it's a very strange um, 
um, sort of composition of a woman who's floated to the ceiling above a fireplace and it's a bright pink wall and um, there's a flag American flag leaning in the corner and also on the fireplace and so it's the fireplace has been closed up and it, it's got on the mantle all these sort of great little tchotchkes you know a little um, ceramic um, collie dog uh, figurines some pictures some crystal vases some milk glass so it's a really um, fun but very unusual um, composition and you kind of wonder what was in the artist's mind when he was setting that up yes mm. this is a fun um, piece as well this is by Rhoda Taylor and um, these are coffee filters that uh, were actually used. Now she manipulated them a little bit by spreading the coffee out onto the filter so it would sort of stain the entire filter, but right out of her coffee maker. And then she embroidered on them on both sides. So they're coffee filter circles and there's um, seven of them strung together, um, three uh, tiers of them and they hang from a piece of bamboo so it becomes a, a kinetic um, work of art and a wall hanging at the same time. And then um, this is Sean Quinlan. Um, he is a, uh, actually he's an editor um, for a news station and makes quilts and he, a lot of his um, his stories come from the news, um, so you'll see a lot of very sort of political um, uh, sort of commentary in them. Um, this one obviously has uh, a main image of Judy Garland in the Wizard of Oz, and then superimposed over here is the uh, part of the face of Christ. So there's a, there is always a story with his quilts and he uses a lot of um, imagery from pop culture and his, but his technique is just so methodical and um, you know detailed that it's um, really fascinating to, to look at, at what he's put together in quilt form. So uh, there's ceramics in the uh, show. This is, is Chuck Johnson. Um, he is from Erie, and um, so he's from you know further further away. Um, but this his things are very playful. Um, this is a pedestal all made out of unfired um, ceramic, and it holds an elephant who in turn holds a building um, on his back. And it's really, um, I think, this idea of, you know, taking the weight of the world on your shoulders, and um, but a really um, sort of playful way to go about it, um, to get his message across. Brian Pardini, and he has a sculpture called Sweet Face, uh, Spirit of Lake Erie. And in fact, this is, a, is driftwood that came out of Lake Erie. And he forms, he, he scavenges from Lake Erie, and then he forms them into sculptures. And this, you know, creating this human form, um, and it's adhered to a, a piece of stone. So it's a very natural, but it also is, um, you know, just a very beautiful curvilinear form. It doesn't, you don't even have to think of it as a figure, but it sort of is this, these, um, this, these arms embracing you as you come into the gallery. Um, Mia Tarducci Henry is the, and I think it's over now, but was the emerging artist at the Pen, uh, Pittsburgh Center for the Arts this year. So that's a great honor, I think, for her. Um, but her painting technique is just so alive and vibrant. And, you know, she, she, this is all turquoise and yellows and greens. And she works, um, it looks like in layers, and then she scrapes off and she reapplies and she scrapes off. So you really get the idea of the artist's process and the artist's hand and you know how she's working it's totally non-objective but you could look at it you know from the distance and just think about you know the sea and the sky and all of those um, it's large as well it's um, 
It's 84 inches, so it's seven feet wide. And so it's sort of all encompassing. It, you can be, you look at it closely and it's all you see um, in your peripheral vision. The Spindle Man, and he's by a, a man, Michael Long, um, who's from Hollidaysburg. And he told me when I saw him in Bedford that um, he was walking by a furniture store, a longtime furniture store in Bedford, and there was a, a box of spindles out in front. And he walked in and he said, do you have any more of these? And they said, oh, and they took him in the back room and he bought them all. So Spindle Man sort of sat in a pile in his studio until he was inspired to make a man out of him. So it's all out of chair spindles. People that, you know, uh, Charlene Badula, um, she went into the Hecla School, and the Hecla School is in ruin and took these really wonderful photographs. And so we have one of her photographs here, and she's actually um, on our staff here at the museum, so it's nice to. And I didn't know that was hers, and that was one of the surprises when I juried the show is when I found out who I'd selected I was pleased because I didn't know I had selected their work so um, and what video do we have we here? have a video here um, by uh, Kyle Milne and it's called I've gone too far to go back 2013 um, and he um, he was um, hiking and it just shows him the artist walking through this really wonderful landscape um, in Colorado and you just see him walking and he's walking and he's walking and it's very um, it's almost meditative but it all and he stops along the way to pick something up and he throws it and then he keeps walking but you see this wonderful um, western landscape unfold behind him and around him so it's it is kind of a meditative walk, and you can live vicariously through him. A vast panorama with a little dot of a person. Um, this is Karen Kagan, um, and two photographs, um, one called Slag Heap. They're inkjet prints, 52 inches wide, and they're not framed, and um, just mounted on the wall um, as um, simple works on paper um, and photography and there's just a um, there's a sense of motion in these they're black and white but you get a sense of this slag heap in the background which is of course really typical of this region and then kids playing on it so it's there's sort of two levels here there's this um, motion of these children running across the the foreground and then there's this big um, sort of slag pile behind and then the natural landscape behind that so it's what happens to the slag piles when nature overcomes but how these kids can enjoy them. Um, Sarika Gulasha um, w is working on panels 12 by 12 inch panels and these make up a six foot by six foot square so there's 36 of them and they um, all are um, charcoal on sprayed um, charcoal on on these panels and she's laid down things on the panels that she has some connection to, uh, a toy, um, some silverware, a tool, um, something that um, then she would spray this charcoal over the top and it leaves the negative space or the white area where the object was sitting. So nails, um, wire, um, all sorts of objects, and a necklace. Um, so then they're put together, they hang about two inches apart in this um, six by six foot um, square area. And they're just, a, I think, a, just a really beautiful formation of, of individual um, pieces that sort of all come together as a group. There's a stethoscope mm -hmm. as well, scissors. So you can recognize um, things in these um, panels. Phil Damianos. Um, who is actually um, one of our exhibition award winners. We, we discontinued that while we are out here on our temporary quarters. But this is, um, he still is an architect, but he just creates these really wonderful forms out of wood as an artist. Um, sometimes you'll see him weaving wood. In this case, it's on a gray panel. There's um, layers of strips of wood that have all been joined together in black, and then in the front are unpainted 
um, pieces of um, wood that um, lay out in the front, pulled away from the background, so they cast these really wonderful shadows. 